Google Ads Promotion Assets is another extension that is available for search network campaigns. Now, just because it says promotion, it doesn't mean that you can attach any single promotion your company might be running. It is limited. So we will show you what those limitations are. We will show you what promotion assets could look like in the wild. And then, of course, we will show you how to add them at a variety of different levels within your account. As I just promised in the intro, I want to show you what one actually looks like within search result pages. Now, they're not going to look like this every single time, but you'll get a good understanding before we actually see what you can do within Google Ads. So within the search bar, I typed in new tires. And in the second example, I'm going to scroll down, blow it up a little bit. In this ad for Goodyear, the bottom line, which I am highlighting right now, is the promotion asset. Every single character in this highlighted section is part of the promotion asset. Since I'm recording this video really close to the publish date in the United States, it's 4th of July week. So a lot of businesses in the States have 4th of July sales. When you set up a promotion asset, you can call out a specific event and Independence Day is one of them. Then moving my mouse, there is a link aspect to the promotion extension. So besides just calling out a promotion, yes, you will be able to drive traffic to that particular promotion, especially if you have a landing page dedicated to it. So in this case, Goodyear's calling out, you'll get $80 off a set of four tires. And then this part at the end, which is optional, you can let users know how long the offer is good for. In this case, it's helpful. I would assume an Independence Day would end on July 4th, but they're giving us an extra day just due to where it falls within the week this year. As I mentioned in the intro, these are search network assets. But there is one case that kind of falls outside these rules. Google mentions if you've added promotion assets to a performance max for store goals campaign, then promotions could appear in Google Maps on mobile devices. But for now, let's go into Google Ads so we can see how to set one up within your account. Okay, I'm in the campaign view, but you already know by now this is an asset. So let's head to the Assets dropdown and click on Assets. Next, find the Promotion Filter. And here, we can start creating our own. So let's go to the blue plus button. And like most assets, but first you have to choose which level you're going to add the asset to. And the priority levels are the same. If you watch any of our other asset or extension videos, this is going to sound like a broken record. The account level makes sense if the promotion that you're going to add will apply to every single search campaign within your account. Even if it's not perfect, sometimes including it at the account level is just a good safety net. Someone might not need what you're offering at the moment, but sometimes it's hard to turn down a good deal. So you still may convince people who might not have been looking for that promotion if it's showing up alongside your text ads. Next, you can set it up at the campaign level. Any asset that you have set up at the campaign level will get a higher priority and override anything at the account level. In case you're wondering, no. If you have two different assets, one at the campaign level and one at the account level, they both will not show up at the same time. If you set them up at the campaign level, only the campaign level assets will show. And then you can get deeper and set them up at the ad group level. You'll have to choose a specific campaign, then choose the specific ad group, and anything at the ad group level will override both the campaign and account levels. So within that ad group, only the ad group level promotion assets will show. Normally for things like site links, structured snippets, callouts, even our last video about price extensions, they may be very specific to certain ad groups. And I want to make those as specific as possible. Promotion extensions, I already mentioned it, I'm a little bit more lenient. So for this example, I'm going to keep it at the account level, have it apply to all of my search network campaigns. I'm going to stick with creating a new one. Next is the occasion header or category. We already saw the Independence Day option at the very beginning of this video, but you see there is a lot to choose from. Back to school. Of course, you're going to have your Cyber Monday, Black Friday options, a variety of different national or religious holidays. We saw Father's Day up above. There is Mother's Day, Singles Day, a spring sale, a summer sale, a winter sale, or you can choose none. That was the default option. And if we look at the bold section over here, which is where the occasion will show first, it just says deal. Next, choose your language. I do believe Google states it does support all languages, so should be no issue there. Then choose your currency. Now, the reason it's asking for a currency is because the promotion type that is defaulted is a monetary discount. So if I just type in an amount here, now we see that monetary discount is reflected in the preview. We're going to look at the other promotion type soon, but I want to finish this first. Next, do what I do and type in the item. Notice you only get 20 characters, so do your best to make it fit. But if you look at the preview, everything we've added so far, the discount plus the item is all within the link. So user can click on this whole thing to send to the landing page, which let me paste in right now. And no, our course is not discounted right now. 
feel free to check it out if you want to. But now let's look at the promotion type. Besides regular monetary discount, maybe there's different levels or tiers depending on what products you're trying to promote. I'm thinking of the tire example. Maybe you get a really good deal off of certain brands of tires. And then maybe for the premium ones, the discount isn't as great. So you can say up to a certain amount off and then list out the entire range. And then once they get to the landing page, they'll be able to see the different tiers. And that's acceptable because you're not hiding anything on the landing page that you're showing them. But then there's the option for percent discount. Once I chose that, you saw the monetary selection went away. So then all you need is language, type in your amount, and then change it in the preview. And you probably saw there was an up to percent discount option as well. But this is what I meant in the intro is that the promotion is limited. You don't see BOGO here or buy one, get one half off. There's no option to say, hey, get a free gift if you test drive. Nothing like that. It's literally just these four options. Still covers a good amount of the promotions that are out there, but it's not everything. But then we can go down to promotion details. If I open this up, you can add a little bit more information to the asset. If you need to call out that it's on orders over a specific amount of money, you could do that. This other option for promo code, we've used for clients a lot. Again, this does not work on our URL, so don't try it. But you can add a promo code and a user will see this line. So essentially I will be telling the user you'll get 25% off our lead gen course when you use the code PMP25 at checkout. Now using this option does not automatically apply the code at checkout. So we strongly recommend if you are gonna use this option to let the user know about this code again on the landing page that you're sending them to. It just builds trust and confirms that they're on the right place and the code is valid. But this promotion details is optional. You can't just leave it at none and there won't be anything here. Now this next part goes with the example we saw with the Goodyear tires, letting users know when the promotion is valid. You don't have to add a start date. If you're setting up a promotion asset and that promotion is valid immediately from launch, just leave it as is, only add an end date. So I'll just say the whole month of July. So when we go back up to the preview again, they're only gonna see when the promotion ends. Totally up to you if you wanna show when the promotion started but in my opinion, who cares about the past? Only care about if it's good now and when does it end? I'm gonna skip URL options. It's all for additional tracking, but I think it's important to look at advanced options because it's gonna look very similar to the displayed promotion dates. Displayed promotion dates is what's visible in the asset when a user sees it. Asset scheduling is when you want this entire promotion asset to start appearing. So let me change my mind. Let's just say in my case, I'm gonna run this promo for about two weeks. Cool, but I have the option to tell Google, yes, the promo code is good for two weeks, but don't show this asset to the public until a week before. I'm gonna add the end date, and then you can also add specific hours. Maybe you just wanna run this promo code in the morning, or maybe Tuesdays are your slowest day, and you only wanna push a promo code to try to get excess sales on your slower day. You'll have that option. But we have clients request this sometimes for the fact that if a user sees that this promotion is good for several weeks to a month, it subconsciously can have them think, oh, I have time to get that later. And then they forget, and then they don't buy anything. Or if a user sees that a promotion is going to end within a day or two, it builds more urgency. Give it the FOMO effect where they don't want to miss out on the deal, click on the asset, find out what the offer is, buy something to make them feel like, hey, I got lucky. So just understand one more time, displayed promotion dates is what the user is going to see. Asset scheduling is when you want the promotion asset to be visible. And as in most things with Google, it's all based on the account's time zone, not when the user is going to see it. So be very careful and keep that in mind when you're scheduling the asset. But then go ahead and save it. Now a couple things to be careful is that most likely my asset is gonna be disapproved. That is because Google can catch when you're talking about a specific promotion and there's no proof of it on your landing page. It falls under their unavailable offer policy. While you may actually be running that sale, that promotion, the offer has to be verified on the landing page. One thing that you also have to be careful of is calling out other brand names within the assets. Similar if it's in your text. I'm not saying this is gonna happen, but let's just say we're selling Converse shoes. And there's a discount on Converse shoes. You're including it in a price asset for your shoe store. If Converse doesn't allow people to use their brand name in their ads, even though it's an asset and not the actual ad text, it could still be disapproved. So look out for those things. Other than that, pretty much any advertiser right off the bat can start using promotion assets. One thing that we do recommend is trying to add as many as possible. This one is a little bit more difficult. You may not be running multiple promotions at a time. 
but try to add as many as you can or that's applicable at a time so you can test them against each other. Even something as simple as not including the promo code in one. Does it make a difference? Find out. Can you test a percentage off with the actual price point off to see what sounds more appealing to users? And maybe that can inform other marketing ideas to test. I'm just trying to toss out ideas, not giving you general recommendations. It's going to be different for every account. And that's how easy it is to set up a promotion asset and get it running within your Google Ads account. If you have any questions or comments about promotion asset strategies, or if you're having any trouble setting up within your account, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.